All right, welcome everyone to the second video here on talking about enthalpies of reactions. In this video, we're going to talk about Kirchhoff's law and how the enthalpy of a reaction depends on temperature. Okay. Right. <clears throat> so often we assume enthalpy of a reaction is constant with temperature, right? Independent of temperature. Um, right. But this is always a good assumption. Okay. And we can find out how this, how we deviate from this constant value um, <clears throat> by first recalling, right, how enthalpy itself depends on temperature, right? And enthalpy dH depends on temperature by the heat capacity at constant pressure times dT, okay? Right? <clears throat> and so if we integrate both sides of this, right, this, this enthalpy change, right, is just related with the integral of Cp dt, okay, right, which if Cp was constant, which just give you Cp delta t, right, which we've, we've talked about before. Okay. But what we're going to do, right, is we're going to talk about, right, the temperature dependence of the chemical reaction, right, if I have a chemical reaction at T1 and at T2, right, this is the enthalpy of the product at T1 minus the enthalpy of the reactant at T1, enthalpy of the product T2 minus the enthalpy of the reactant T2, right. And what we're interested in is what I'm calling here delta delta H, okay, the change in the change in enthalpy of a reaction. And that's related, right, with the difference in the enthalpy at T2 and that of T1. So if I just plug in from that previous slide, right, that delta delta H, <coughs> right, plugging in for what delta H T2 and delta H T1 are, and then rearranging gives me H of T2 minus H of T1 of the products minus H T2 minus H T1 of the reactants, okay? And so for each of these guys, if I recall then from earlier, right, H T2 minus H T1 is just the integral of C P D T. And so this delta delta H is just equal to the integral of the C P of the products minus the integral of the CP of the reactants, okay? Well, and so this delta delta H here is given by this equation, right? Integrals of the CP of products minus reactants, delta T. Often that is shorthanded written as delta CP, right? So delta CP is the CP of the products minus the CP of the reactants, okay? And this is Kirchhoff's law, right? Now, when we apply Kirchhoff's law, often we're going to assume, right, that <clears throat> Cp is constant for our products and our reactants, okay, right? And that delta Cp, again, as a reminder, is the Cp of the products minus the Cp of the reactants, okay? Often the molar values, and then I multiply by the stoichiometric coefficients of those guys, okay? And again, if we assume Cps are constant with temperature, then this equation kind of simplifies down to the change in the change in enthalpy of my reaction with temperature, right, is related with the change in heat capacities of my products minus reactants multiplied by their stoichiometric coefficients times change in temperature. Okay. <clears throat> right. So the the um, the approximation that CPs are constant, right, these heat capacities are constant with temperature, right, is often a decent one because even if the heat capacity of your products change with temperature, typically the heat capacity of the reactants change with temperature in the exact same type of way. So when you take the difference of these two things, that difference is fairly temperature independent, okay? So delta CP is, uh, approximating that as temperature independent is a very, very good approximation even if approximating CP is uh, being temperature independent is not, okay? So again, because I'm taking a difference between heat capacities, right, um, and the temperature dependence of heat capacities of different substances is typically the same, right, um, that, that change in heat capacity um, between products and reactants is typically temperature independent, okay? So that form of delta delta H equaling delta CP times delta T is typically very, very valid to use in most systems and problems. <clears throat>